on there and I had to get decals for my face to make the the day of the dead and all this other craziness because the bride and groom are nuts. <laughs> hey, my birthday falls on the last day of Dia, uh, Dia de los Muertos. Day of the Dead. Yes. <laughs> What's your birthday? Good. November 2nd. I love November 1st. Sweet. Ha. Back to back. Uh-huh. But you didn't oh. get okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Rich. You didn't get all dressed up in Day of the Dead gear for your wedding, though. No, my my wedding was on uh Cinco de Mayo. Oh, the day of my people. <laughs> you know isn't the day of the dead your people too rich that's uh, what I was... my, the day of the day uh, the day of my people is is uh september 16th what's that uh, that's when the new chevys come out oh jesus <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh dad jokes all day long all day long rich is all right jerry it's off to you all right i got in my car this morning it was 37 degrees Woo yay. 37 you. degrees although with the hot flashes like it's not affecting me like it did last year so anyway there's positive in all of that right so we have um so just to be to remind everybody again um accounting is kind of we're down a couple people so let's have some grace with accounting and also um because i know a lot of you are saying hey has this been paid has this been paid if you got funds for this you got funds for that um i don't mind looking but just i just want to say like you know they're having a tough time right now so let's have some grace for them but but send keep sending me the emails am i getting days, paid, can, he wants me to put on there like am i getting paid and he wants me to put nope and that it so that's not happening. Well, just don't bother Jerry with am I going to get paid right now? Because they're behind. No, it's all right. It's a, it's okay. I may be, it may be, um, you know, a couple, couple days. But if they've told you that this has been paid, I want y'all to ask them how was it paid? Was it a check? When was the check sent? And how the method of payment was. Usually that will weed out that they, when they say it's in the mail, that will weed out that it's not actually in the mail. Okay. So you start asking them those three questions and blame it on me. Just say, hey, my, my accounting department needs to know so we can get it faster. We can expedite it faster if I know these three things. So that's my, that's my tip Tuesday, as Andrea says. All right. So for listings last week. Uh, Vanessa and Courtney, so good job on the listings and for uh, our sales. Who got keys last week? Uh, Cornell did, and Joan and Robin and Hank all got keys last week. So congratulations mm -hmm. for everybody for that. Lease listings, I'm not sure. Do we have any? Nope, but we did get some closings for leases. Uh, Lara, Rich, Jordan, Nancy, and Karen all did lease list, lease gave lease keys. They had a closing on a lease last week. Words are hard, but anyway, that's all I have. Thank you. All right, announcements. We have our agent of the week this week is Catherine Ludkoff. Congratulations, Catherine. You have been going above and beyond and helping out. Um, and we just appreciate you so, 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 so much. So um, congratulations. And just a reminder, we have our next in-person sales meeting. So if you are like, well, when's the next in-person sales meeting? Um, I just got a text message this morning from someone that was like, hey, is today's sales meeting in person? And I was like, nope. But if you would go look at the other sales meetings, we tell you every single week when they are. So please mark your calendars. The next one will be next week, uh, October 24th, and then um, the following week on the 7th, and then the 28th. So those are our next in-person sales meetings. So please, please, please mark your calendars so that uh, y'all know when they are, all right? 
Our opportunity calls happen today at 11.30 to 12.30, so mark your calendars for that. And then on Fridays from 10 to 11.30. Um, Y'all have been doing a fantastic job showing up to these, so keep it up. Um, I love that every single week uh, you guys are out there calling, and um, we have a lot of expireds happening, so uh, now's the time to be calling those folks. We have a new thing that's coming up. Achievement Alliance. So this is where we are going to start a kind of um, accountability, helpful, um, really the AA of real estate is what I called it. Uh, whenever Grant initially said, hey, we're going to do this thing. And I was like, cool, AA, <laughs> like we are going to be accountable to each other. And um, it's not another training that's being offered. This is going to be a dynamic group dedicated to the uh, consistent execution of proven essentials that are key to uh, being a successful real estate agent. The Achievement Alliance is an accountability group designed to help us cut out the noise and reduce our list of a thousand things to do to those key and proven essentials. So if you are in interested, um, you're going to be getting an email. Uh, some of y'all received a pre-invite. And if you saw an email that came from me that said, hey, or from Grant that said, hey, we'd love for you to be in um, the Achievement Alliance, um, this is going, this is now open to everybody to um, be joining now. So it will take place one hour weekly for only eight weeks. So it's going to end right before Thanksgiving, I think. No, that's wrong. It's going to end. We're going to take off Thanksgiving week and then it ends the week before Christmas. That's what it is. So um, we understand that there's holidays that are coming up. So um, just know that if you are going to commit to this, we understand you guys are going to be out for Thanksgiving and that sort of thing. So um, we're going to skip that week, but it will be um, kicking off next week on the 23rd. And the invite will have the day and the time for our office. It will be in office. It will be here. So you won't have to drive to Stack or Westlake or Lake Travis. It's going to be here. So um, make sure to be on the lookout for, it from, for an email from Grant. You're right, Jerry. Words are hard today. Um, and now off to Ken. Good morning, everyone. So you hear me stuffed up. It's that time of the season where you're stuffed up, you're cold, you're uh, uh, uh. This is why I don't like cold weather. Right, Cheryl? No. So anyway, but you know what I do like? Google reviews. <laughs> so we did get four Google reviews this week. Keisha, good job. Catherine, Anne, and Deborah, good job on getting your guys' Google reviews. Um, if you guys it sounded like you called Anne and like it just seemed like you said Keisha, <laughs> Catherine, and, and De Deborah. Uh, Deborah. So Anne also Anne. and you Anne. are stuffed up. <laughs> Yeah, I am definitely. And I take allergy shots. So there's that. It would be worse if I did. Love the season changes. Anyway, uh, so get those Google reviews if you guys need them. We have several cards throughout the office. Um, or if you want, and you don't have to do it, it doesn't have to be somebody you've already worked with. It can be somebody, a past, past person that you worked with at a previous job. Um, I tell people this all the time, family, friends. Uh, whoever, just get those Google reviews because they really do work and it helps you with your business. And now's the time to be working on your business for next year. So keep it up with those Google reviews and the ones that need help with it, let it reach out to us and we'll be more than happy to help you when getting those. Cool. Are we doing an in focus? Because I'm looking at the slide and it says builder contracts. And we Which did that last week. We talk about something in focus this morning, and though neither one of us, you get us together, and neither one of us can remember, even though we talk about it together. So uh, we'll probably skip that slide. <laughs> Rich is looking at the screen like, I have no idea. I God, forget. I we said, oh, yeah, we'll talk about it. And I said, that is in focus. Maybe Jordan would know, but. 
I'm not walking into a conversation that's already started. I learned my lesson yesterday. Yeah, yeah that was rough. <laughs> <laughs> that was open mouth, insert foot moment. Anyway, okay, so moving on. All right. Back to me. I don't know why I muted myself. Uh, October challenges, just a reminder, we have our three month contract challenge. So who can get the most properties under contract, get listings signed, get buyers under contract, win big. Um, shockingly, I only have like one person that has given me any sort of ideas of what they think that the price should be. So I am still waiting for emails and I'm looking at a couple of y'all that I know have ideas. Um, so make sure to send me an email with your ideas of what you would like your prize to be. Um, so far, what I'm kind of thinking is uh, to do some Land's End, uh, you know, um, clothing, apparel, um, possibly a, a JB Goodwin hat, something to that effect. And then um, there's always the old Yeti. It's coming into the, the cold season. So um but let me know if you have any other ideas for what you would like the prize to be. Uh, we've done trips in past. I might do a trip as well. Oh, one month worth of mortgage payment. I love that, Matthew. No. And don't let them take you to the train station, y'all. Don't put down, don't go if it says anything about a train station. <laughs> yep. Uh, I just want to put on there that we take Jerry to the train station for your hey, prize. Hey, what about the Polar Express? We could do we could do a Polar Express prize. There you go. Granted, you'd have to do that prior. I don't think they'd run it. I'd have to see about tickets for that. Uh, When's it over? When's I don't know. Over? Jerry, why don't you look into that for me? I will. Or, I will. That'd be cracker or ice skating or whatever, Disney on ice, whatever those things are. Yeah. yeah. It could be all yeah. kinds of fun things. Could be anything like that. So um, this is yeah. the time for you real estate agents to become creative. Yep. So that's what I'm calling you to do. Um, dinner at Flat Creek Winery. Yeah, there you go. Um, okay. So today's Tip Tuesday. That's the whole point of life, you know, to meet new people. Shocker. Um if y'all were on the um, Monday breakthrough yesterday, I talked a lot about um, meeting new people and really just getting past the point of when you meet somebody and you feel like you drop the ball uh, with communicating with them and talking to them. Um, life happens. People get busy. The phone works two ways, right? It, they haven't called you. You haven't called them. Pick up the phone and reach back out. But that's really what you've got to get past the fear of, well, I haven't talked to this person in so long. And it, you know, I don't know if it's just me, but I used to have that big anxiety where I'd be like, oh, I don't want to call this person because I feel like I haven't talked to them in a while. And I should have called them a long time ago. But at the end of the day, you pick up the phone and that conversation always goes way better in a way different uh, way than you think. So, uh, that's my tip for you. Get out there, meet new people. And for the people that you have met in past, don't be afraid to reach back out. Okay. This week's challenge, how many people should you be talking to each week? One of the challenges in real, in real, estate, in real estate is uh, figuring out how many conversations lead to a sale. So um, this week, I would like you to have... Um, start conversations and activities around your sales activities, right? So if you haven't had a sale in a while, we understand that. You know, you can use your posts more than once. You can take your posts from all last year from your sales and create multiple posts and recycle those. People don't pay attention, but they will pay attention if you're constantly in their feed and it looks like you are doing a lot of sales. And it's not that you are lying because you did the sales or you did the leasing. Um, so go back through your timelines, grab those sales and repost those. So um, also, I'd like you to start a spreadsheet to log how many conversations you have each week alongside your sales activity over this three month period. So. 
I know we all hate spreadsheets. I hate spreadsheets most of all. A lot of times I will end up taking graph paper that's right next to my desk and I will kind of graph off what I have done and then do check marks next to everything that were my goals, but then also keeping track of who I have talked to. Because at the end of the day, if you look up after a week and you go, man, I, I haven't had any business and you you look at your you know who have i actually talked to it's a lot easier to go oh well i really only had two new conversations this week i need to up that um so that is kind of the purpose of this start tracking your uh communication with people and then as you're starting to have these conversations i'd like you to start try with 10. if 10 is too much then go with the number that you can get to so if your number is three then cool that's your number. If your number's five, great. Um, if your number's 50, great. But start talking to these folks every single week. Um, join our Tuesday power hour for calling. And then um, be brave and start a conversation at your local community, kids sporting events, or even at the grocery store. So get out there and start talking to people. Social media ideas this week. Get an open house on the books, post a live video while you're there. Share a fun activity you're doing to celebrate fall or share a photo of your most recent closing. Okay? Cool. Over to Rich. Good morning, sports fans. All right, all right, all right. So who's got some success this week? Let me see your hands. I know you're out there. Knock, you are killing it. What's going on, Knock? What did you have? So I have a a previous client. Uh, while I went on vacation back in May, June timeframe, and uh, she decided to buy a house was on the spot with someone else. But then she remembered me and referred me to her friend. So now I'm working with her friend in California. That. So um, so this is a prior client and she kind of dissed you by using another agent yes but, but then remembered and said oops my bad and she referred you to her friend yes that's awesome kind of yeah that's good so all right so uh now you're looking for uh, she's a buyer you're looking for a place for her yes In investment awesome. investment home awesome that's great robin what did you have well, I had a closing finally tomorrow, thank God. <laughs> it, it, it was an arduous event, but we were finally closing tomorrow. Um, and then I got a contract under, I got my listing under contract today. Yes, out in Bertram. Phenomenal. So, Good job. Closing Good on that job. next week. It's a okay, cash so or two, it so might be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> You know, a lot of people think that this is a slow time of year, but it's not. I've consistently been busy, not so much this uh, this year, but I've been consistently been busy the last three months of the year. So it's still a good time to buy. People are still buying. Who else has a success story? Uh, I know somebody does. That's I do, it. Rich. I do, Rich. Uh -oh. So I'm trying to start out in Lampasas with real estate. Okay. Uh -huh. So Facebook post, I get home and my husband says, hey, there's someone on Land Passes looking for a realtor. I put your name in there, but you need to respond to this. And so you know how everybody and their brother, so you start reading the comments and everybody's like, I'm a realtor, I'm a realtor. You need to use this person. You need to use this person. She's awesome, but it wasn't me. So anyway, she said, okay, thank you. And I'm, I'm talking to her. And so I said, you know what? I'm going to chat her just individually, just put my name in there, see what she's needing, tell her about my listing in Lamb Passes. She texted me back and said, hey, I'm not looking for a house. I'm looking for a commercial property for my coffee shop. We we do lunch and dinner, but I want to kind of like downsize and just do coffee and and uh, bakery items. And I'm and so I gave her a couple options in Lamb Passes that I have seen. And she's like, great, send them to me. So, you know, She's talking to a real estate agent, but maybe that real estate agent's not talking back or not saying the right things. So, you know, cross our fingers that, you know, yep. it works. So 
even though you've got 100 realtors answering those Facebook things, just message them and just, and that was like out of my comfort zone. Just let me tell you. And I, she said, good night in the whole nine yards. But like she put me to bed. She was like, good night. So anyway, fun story. Absolutely. That's great, Jerry. I mean, and this is important that when you see these posts say, I'm looking for uh, an agent or something like that, you're going to look at the comments and there's going to be like 12 different agents. Hey, I'm an agent. I'm an agent. I'm an agent. I can help you. Go the extra mile and 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 chat with that person and let them know that, I mean, you've already gone the extra mile, so it's going to make a big difference for you. Good job. Ashley. Good morning, Rich. Good morning, everyone. Um, somewhat of a success story, I think. I've been kind of chilling. Uh, hi. I'm going to turn this off. <clears throat> uh, chilling since I've had the twins and... I just posted one of my just listed the other day to my my uh, Facebook, and I really haven't been posting much at all about real estate. It's been like all babies. Um, you know, I've even had a couple of people ask if I'm still working. And so anyway, I posted my just listed and a neighbor um, texted me this morning and was like, you know, I was wondering if you were working or not, but I saw your post and I'm wanting to sell my house um you know i was wondering if we could meet and go over everything so um yeah just being active on the internet and just sharing stuff you know has good helped time. me um with my success that's good and huh? i also took the twins to a listing appointment yesterday and i got that listing so <laughs> i had i had no choice but to take them and it worked <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So don't forget. I mean, when when you come across uh, uh, all these all these uh, uh, distractions like twins, new puppies, or whatever, don't forget to post that you're still in the business. Don't forget to post that hey, you can still help people. Uh, Absolutely. So right. Also, right. if you're in doubt on a listing yeah. appointment, borrow Ashley's twins. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely. Just take them with you. They're pretty good. It'll work. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, back to you, Andrea. All right. Uh, our relocation update. Do we have Michelle on here or Terry? You going to go, Terry? I'm here. All right. Let's go. <laughs> spooktacular a referrals contest i was wondering if we were going to be doing something kind of for halloween so it's october 9th until halloween um and that's where you have qualified buyer and seller referrals will be entered into the 500 dollars drawing at the end of the month so andrea yeah so <laughs> don't be scared to reach out and touch your friends i mean friends and oh yeah it was fiends I mean, friends, and ask for the business. I do think that's kind of hard to do. You have to, you have to just kind of just do it. Just do it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. No tricks, just treats for sending an outgoing referral today. So I know I did that, but I think it was last year um, for my stepdad. It worked out great. You know, so several months later, I got some mailbox money. I think that's what I call it popping candy money. But anyway, you get that in the mail. It's nice. <laughs> Love it. Thank you, Terry. And uh, just a reminder, we have the new designs out in the uh, quantum. So check those out. And uh, we have Thanksgiving food drive in November. So we'll be accepting food donations to assist um, the Williamson County Food Bank. Uh, on November 14th. So mark your calendars for November 14th. That's whenever you are going to be coming into the office. And we'll be reminding you um, starting November 1 to start going around collecting food. And we'll have um, a little box here at the office that you can start dropping off food donations. And then Christmas wish. wish. Who of y'all have signed up for this? So uh, December 14th, it's for one hour, and um, we're going to bring one $15 gift and then um, be delivering that gift and spending some time with our Austin State Supported Living Center. 
Love it. And is Kevin back? Kevin's back. Is he on? Is the question. I didn't see him. Yeah, Kevin, you're on. Unmute. You're up. Maybe. How about now? There, there you are. Uh, good morning. All right. So, uh, good morning, everybody. We have uh, quite a bit to cover. So, um, if you have specific questions about some of these new rollouts from Fannie Mae, um, you'll kind of have to hit me up later. Um, we have seen some increase, or not increase, we've seen, seen some improvement on the market in regards to that little spike in interest rates we seen two weeks ago. Um, I sent out a rate sheet yesterday. Um, if you're not receiving that and would like to, please feel free to give me a, a call or a text and I'll get you added to the list. Uh, I think we're right around seven and a quarter for conventional, just below seven on government, um, but I still have people that are locking well below that. Um, the big Fannie Mae rollout that is going to be the most important is they now have a 12-month requirement for self-employment rather than 24 on conventional. So if you've been self-employed or 1099 greater than 12 months, you don't necessarily have to have the tax return filed. As long as you're at your 12-month mark, we can start looking at that for qualifiable income. So that's going to be a big gain for self-employed and 1099 borrowers. Um, You'd think anybody... that they would make that a bigger thing on this uh, little flyer, but it's down at the bottom there that it says that. that. Yeah, it, it's pretty small. So yeah, I didn't make this. This was what was handed to us. Um, but the, uh, the other guideline that changed that was pretty significant was we used to need the interior HUD sticker and the exterior plate on the mobile homes. It is now one or the other. It is no longer both. Um, the big announcement, as you can see there in the middle, the multifamily units from two to four units. A lot of that used to be uh, 15 and 25% down. If it is primary residence purchase, so not straight investor, but if it is primary purchase residence, we can purchase that property for a conventional 5% down. So, yep, big gains there for people who want to make that step to investment properties but still need a place to live. I think it's a great way to get started. Um, buying the, the multi-units and then moving out later. Um, one additional thing to rental incomes and qualifying for these multi-unit um, properties, we occasionally see single family homes that have what we call a mother-in-law suite or an additional living unit, and it used to create issues. It is now a good thing. Not only can it be there with FHA, um, we can now have it at a at 30% of rental or a 30% of mortgage coverage from the rental. So if it's got an additional conforming square footage unit in the backyard and they're going to charge, you know, $1,200 a month rent for it, we can use 30% of that rent to help your income per year or compensate to reduce that mortgage. So um, it's just kind of a way for buyers if, if the property is a little bit too much, but it's got a second unit and they'd be down to Airbnb that out or, you know, rent that out and the HOA allows it. We can really start making a big difference on that monthly payment and their ability to qualify for that type of property. So it's no longer just an extra expense. We can actually start using some of that income. So lots of changes. Um, but with that, they're trying to make this market, you know, as workable as possible. Like Rich said, deals are still going through. Uh, we have all agreed in our sales meeting that standard deals are not happening. We're having to construct deals. We're having to build buyers with specific amounts of concessions and specific things being paid for, helping people understand paying certain debts and taking away certain amounts of cash. Um, so we're, we're still able to put deals together. So if you have buyers that don't think they can make it, we still wanna have a conversation. The last thing we want to do is pass somebody up or worse yet, talk to them next summer and they go, well, I think we're ready now. And then we find out they took jobs that aren't applicable or did something with their funds that we, you know, make it unusable. Um, and if we had just talked to them this winter, we could have told them to hold off on a few things and got them in a better position. So um, still could be a good month. Um, I know we're getting towards the end here. So if we could get a couple more in for November, I think we can hit some good numbers for the team. So I look forward to seeing you all around. Awesome. Did you want to talk about the risk-free analysis? I'm not going to lie. I completely forgot. Thank you. Um, that's why I put it on the slide. I mentioned last week, uh, I mentioned it last week. Uh, we didn't have a slide up for this smart poll process. 
Um, it is quite a bit heftier than, than just a soft pull. We get to view uh, a lot more information than a standard soft pull with one bureau. So this does us two things. We can help ensure the qualification of the client and not just be guessing. We can help ensure that you're spending appropriate time with your client so you're not wasting your time with non-qualifying people. Um, and the biggest benefit now, this wasn't part of last week, we can make all these uh, smart pull processes without giving the alert to the credit bureau. So your clients will have the option after their smart pull, they'll fill out a form and they're going to opt out with us. They're going to opt out of information selling on the bureau level. So come the day that we make the hard pull for your client, nobody's going to know. You know, the bureaus legally can sell their information to creditors and other lenders. It's perfectly legal and they do it all the time. That's why your clients get 15 calls from people in the next three days. We can make that go away. They have to do the smart pull process to start. So we avoid the hard hit and then they fill out the, uh, um, the form so they can opt out. And then once we make the hard inquiry, once we know that everybody's in agreement that we need to make a contract, we go ahead and make the hard pull and nobody's the wiser. It's never alerted. So it keeps the phone quiet, keeps your client happy. So if you got people that are on the edge of, oh, I don't want to do it because of my credit, that's not an excuse anymore. Let's have a chat. Awesome. I just put Kevin's email address in the chat if you need it um, so that he can talk to you some more about all these different things. Um, Kevin, I just have to say, this is the first time in a couple months where I've been really, really excited from, for some new stuff coming down the pipeline, especially it, the uh, 24 month change, 12 months yeah. to 24 months change. And honestly, this uh, HUD certificate and label, because I don't know how many times you, we mm -hmm. get the phone call of, I've got a you know, mobile home and I need to sell it. And you go, okay, cool. Is it attached? Do you yep. have both of these things? And they're like, well, I got the certificate, but I don't know where my plate is. And you go, yep. ah. or it's covered so, up by siding. So in just a paint small, is one yeah. of the worst things. Like you, small somebody will paint it, paint right over it. If, if you guys are, are approaching a listing or a purchase of a mobile home, e even if they have a, a, a different lender or whatever financing they're using, come talk to me. I've got a list of things that are absolutely required, no matter who's financing that property. There's five things that absolutely have to exist and be there for that mobile home to go. You'll present, prevent yourself from a lot of heartache and frustration later if we just take care of it before you go live. Yep. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good one. Yep. Cheryl, don't forget, we have happy hour today, this afternoon, today. four o'clock to six o'clock. Yes, and the weather's going to be amazing. Um, Evan's going to be grilling hot dogs. Kevin's bringing cornhole. We're going to have cold drinks. We'll all be outside. Um, come join us. Bring the puppies. Um, we'll be out there. It's a great time for us just to, to sit outside. They've got great picnic tables. We can catch up, meet new friends. Um, we're looking forward to it. And I wanted to bring up, uh, we've got the Austin Title Agent class. Um, this is our app. I talk about it every month because I just love the content in it. A new calculator just came out. It's uh, by now or later. Super simple to use. Um, it, it's amazing. Roxanne's going to be um teaching it tomorrow. Roxanne Ford is our sales manager. It's via Zoom. So jump on. She goes through every single calculator. There are 14 in there. They're all free. And then on the back end, it's got a marketing uh, component, which is absolutely amazing. Amazing. But um, come join us this afternoon. We'll be there. Put on your shorts. It's going to be a beautiful day. And um, I can't wait to see y'all. I muted myself. Thank you, Cheryl. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Uh, again, market talk. Good morning again. Did you just wake up? Did we uh, disturb no. your nap? We did. No. We did. Uh, he didn't sleep last well, night. I'm sure it was the two puppies. I have two puppies. <laughs> anyway, within the last seven days, we have new active listings, 874. So see... Uh, market's still going strong. A lot of new active listings, price decreases, still a lot of those, 1,498. Price increases, 144. Back on the market, 170. Active under contract, 373. Pending, 358. 
closed within the last seven days as 558 withdrawn 280 expired 92 again i say expired 92 and on hold 100 so you guys know what to do on on tuesdays and on fridays get in here and make those calls you guys they're not going to sit them. so if you don't do it somebody else will so and this week i did gerald isd and we have currently 222 active listings now look at this ranging from 194,999. I haven't seen anything in the hundred thousands in a long time. So I had to look it up and guess what? It's a brand new build for 194,999. So how many square foot is that? It's like 1300, just mm -hmm. it's between 12 and 1300 square feet. Um, Will they raise it later? Yeah, they will because prices are increasing every time a, a builder. So every time a builder sells a house, they have usually they sell every three and then they have a price increase or they do something like that. So uh, they will not stay that low. But so it really is right now. You can go get a house today for one ninety four nine nine nine. Yep, three bedroom, two bathroom, thirteen hundred square foot house. Doesn't have a garage, but it does have a new house. So there's that. Um, and, and then going from two point two million, which that was twenty something acres in Gerald. Um, so. Uh, active under contractor pending, there was 115. Sold within the last 30 days, pretty consistent. Tw uh, 61 this year so far, in 2022, 64, and 2020, 65. So we're right there. Uh, same thing with you sold year to date, 664 this year as opposed to last year, 635 and 593 in 2020. The reason being is, is because look at the price. 194 999 people are having to get go out there to get a good price on the house um 238.01 days of inventory average house price is 347 819 um last year was 393 681 and 2020 was 238 420. that officially throws gerald into a buyer's market right that's yep. not happened in a long time like seven years uh -uh. Uh -uh. so if you have buyers gerald's the place to go <laughs> even for investors it's a great place to be so average days on market 64 currently um 2022 was 18 and 2020 was 23 days on the market so um definitely gerald's a good area to is gerald a good area to live in it just depends on what people want some people my wife wants to live downtown she wouldn't think it was a good area to live in um some people like the country and they think it is a good area to live in so it just depends on your clients joe uh, if that's what you're asking so it just depends on them and that's what i have this week all right over to katherine Hey everyone. So this week we have, so our going the extra mile building a referral based business. It's uh, October 18th from 10 to 11. So it's really a good one. So learn from Blaine Johnson. If you never heard of from, from him for the newbies, uh, this is a must see and must uh, attend. He is awesome. Um, he gives so many uh, tips and tricks, how he started, what he did um, over the years. So tune in for that. How many listings does he have right now, Ken? Uh, it's a ton, right? He has 43 listings currently. Actually, 48. <laughs> oh, is it 48, Grant? Yeah. He just added a, a few more. That was a lot. He's a machine, yeah. Let me tell you. So yeah. he's yeah. constantly in the platinum top 50. So guys, um, you can learn a lot from him. Yeah, absolutely. And also note the time change. So it's not 11 to no noon. It is 10 to, 10 11. to 11. Mark your calendars. I say it again. Mark your calendars because I don't know how many times 
People would just be like, oh, I thought it was from 11 to noon. It's like, were you listening? No. So please, Guys, 10 to 11. Tomorrow. Come on. Tomorrow from 10 to 11. All right. Marketing, prospecting, and engaging uh, with Phil DeGallo. Um, Gilda, ugh, Delgado. <laughs> Sorry, Phil. <laughs> so um, I already attended those classes and they're really good. He gives you perfect ideas and uh, tools and templates um, and uh, exercises that you as a realtor so can understand and adopt uh, in, in different kinds of mindsets and uh, go forward. And I don't know, is this a CE class this time? Uh, sometimes he gives CE for those classes too. So, I don't but, believe this one's going to be CE. I don't think so either, but sometimes he does. All right. Upcoming next level trainings, uh, San Antonio only is legal one and two in person on November 1st from 8.30 to 4.30. Um, Austin only Moxie uh, agent website workshop. It's an in-person at the stack office. It's November 1st from 11 to 12. And then we have uh, November 8th from 11 to 12 stage to show preparing your listing to sell. And next Monday's uh, breakthrough um, dumpster fire to trainer of the year. Wow, so that's awesome. Sarah Blomstrom from Chicago Title will join us. Um, and let's see what she has to tell us a little about. All right, thank you, Catherine. It's that time of the sales meeting. So raise your hand if you have a just listed new buyer need, new lease need, who needs what? Terry, you're the first one out of the gate. I, I know, I was in a hurry. Okay, so I have a coming soon. We're gonna go live this Thursday. The address is 2905 Bernardino Cove. It's in Broughton Park, uh, 1541 square feet, three bedroom, two bath. Um, I need open house agents to uh, for Sunday. We're going to list at uh, 435. The house has been, both bathrooms have been updated. Kitchen has been updated and it is almost, it is on almost a third of an acre. So really pretty lot. He even has grapevines in the back so you can make your own wine. Woohoo! <laughs> and then I am going to have a listing that's coming back on the market. We had a tenant in there. Um, the tenant is moving out, and so the house will be vacant. I'll need open house um, agents for that one as well. So that one's going to go live November fourth, uh, I think it was third, and it's a one nine four one eight Camus Drive, and that's in Pflugerville, Vine Creek in Pflugerville, and he's really dropped the price on that three forty five. Make a great investment. Uh, three bed, two and a half bath, super cute since it's, it's in real good condition, built in 2019. So anyway, open house agents and uh, help me out with some buyers. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Terry. Uh, Catherine. I have this awesome lot in a, a condo community right at Manfield Stump. So if you have somebody who's looking for a lake, you know, lakeside living because it's right between Lake Austin and Lake Travis. Half an acre, awesome community. It's gated. It's 30 to 35 minutes from downtown. It's 35 minutes uh, towards uh, Bee Cave. So it's right in the middle of everything. Uh, we're listed at 329,000. And yeah, if you look for a dream home to be built there, just give me a call. Awesome. Thank you, Catherine. Jerry. So I have it coming soon. I'm hoping to get it live this weekend. Um, it's in Lampasas, so I'm super excited about that. It's a three bedroom, two bath, 2,048 square feet. It was built in 1972 and it is 1972 in there. Inside, is, everything is 1972, but it's in really, really good shape. Um, it's got a bonus room. It's on a third acre. Um, it's gonna, I'm gonna start it at 240. Um, and so it's a really good investment and it's an hour from Austin, an hour from Round Rock. So, um, land passes, you, you, if they want country, you're going to move back in time a little bit. It's a great, great, um, area to live. I, I, I really love it. So anybody who wants to move to the country, let them know about me. Sweet. Thank you, Jerry. And what you got? 
I still have my listing in Spicewood, and this Saturday we're having a uh, neighborhood open house, and uh, there'll be five houses open, ranging from like 700,000 to mine, which is 445. So if you have anyone looking for um, to live in Lake Travis, please uh, stop by the open houses from 11 to 4 p.m. Awesome. Thank you, Ann. Linda. You're muted, Linda. All right. You hear me now? Yep. Okay. So I have a listing um, of 12409 Willow Bend Drive. Now, this is in the city of Austin. It has 0.48, you know, little, almost half an acre. And uh, according to the um, according to the survey, the city of Austin has it, I think, at 0.41. But it has a, a really nice big lot, and it's in a spot where you could probably put an ADU. And right now, it is fully furnished. If someone wants to buy it, it was set up to be um, an Airbnb. And then the, my clients decided they wanted to sell it and buy an Airbnb in Houston. So they have everything there for an Airbnb. And I think it's about maybe it's negotiable, but maybe 8,000 more for all the furnishings, including bedding and you know books and you know all kinds of stuff. Anyway, it has a, it's 1,933 square feet, but the bonus room is um, not in that square footage. That's an additional 350 square feet or more. And it's all, it's all been totally remodeled. So you might want to take a look at it. I think it'll be a good investment as far as rental or as far as an Airbnb or just as a family home. And it's priced at... Six hundred sixty-five thousand nine hundred. Perfect. You literally, I was muted, and I was going to say, "What's a price at?" Um, so, thank you so much, Linda and Kevin. What you got? I just want to add a comment since Linda mentioned the Airbnb part. Um, Premier doesn't provide the products specifically, but I do have some knowledge and outlets in regards to. DSCR or what we call debt service coverage ratio loans for Airbnb, um, as well as I have two outlets for hard money contacts. So if you guys have clients looking for investment uh, financing, aside from just traditional 20% conventional, I do have uh, a way to make that happen as well. Awesome. Thank you, Kevin. All right. Anybody else going once? Going twice? Have a fantastic week, y'all. We are here every day. So come and see us. Have see a good you all this afternoon. We'll see you this afternoon. That's right. Four o'clock yeah. over at uh, Cheryl's office. Austin, Austin Title. Austin Title.